We are finally getting around to doing this Hoosier. I think we showed it to you probably a month ago. It was before the kitchen remodel and the pieces are all taken apart. It had a pretty bad paint job on it before. So Jamie took it all apart without any adult supervision. This has these runners on the bottom and it originally is meant to slide in here. You know what? I know why it comes out now. It's got this catch under here that slips right into place. And then if you push this forward, that goes away. So you've got a larger working area. I believe this is the cutting board that slips into there. Gives you a lot more work area when you've got a small kitchen. Normally we don't do a ton of prep. I'm definitely not sanding this down to the raw wood because we're just gonna be painting it again but the original paint job on this, there's two or three different layers. There were a bunch of drips and runs, so we're just sanding them smooth so that when we apply our paint job on it, that doesn't all come through. We're gonna leave a couple, but not much. When we originally got the piece, it had hardware that was shaped kind of like this, but it poked way out over the edge. I'm pretty sure it wasn't the original, so I'm going to put the correct hinges on there, which will look like this. So I've got the hinges on. I'm putting them on first because with a piece this old, we're going to go pretty chippy with the finish. Put them on first, that way they get some paint on them and get kind of that chippy look as well. I've actually got a 50-50 uh, Fairy Chalk Mother Snowflake to DIY White Swan and then I, we've got our water in here to water it down because we have just a little bit of this and a little bit of that left over so hopefully it's enough because this is a one of a kind mix. Um, if you want to know more about spraying paint, Zeb's going to put the link right there on how to spray chalk paint. It's got all the information. Every sprayer is a little bit different. Just play around with it until you get the ratios just right. The most important thing is that it sprays well but it's not so thin that it drips and not so thick that it like chunks up your sprayer. Just takes a little practice, but it makes painting a whole lot easier. This spray gun is from Harbor Freight. We're not affiliated with them, but that's where this came from. And we've got a 60 gallon Husky back there air compressor. You can get away with at least an eight to a 10 gallon, but we've got the 60 because we use it a lot. And if you want to use the paint, go to jamierayvintage.com and I've got all my paint and sealers on my website. The glass wasn't looking very good in here and it was old and beat up and one of the panes was broken. I am going to be fitting hardware cloth into this. These are just tin snips. You can use pliers, whatever you've got. Most of the time I'll use my grinder. I'll just get my size that I need and just zip that along with the grinder real quick and it's done. All right, it's time to get the grinder out. All right, so we've got it all sprayed. I'm going to go ahead and distress it and then when I'm done distressing, Zeb is going to show you how to put the hardware cloth in. I don't think he showed you, but he took a hammer and he banged it. Did you show him that? I didn't. And I want it to look more like a pie safe, so he's going to put hardware cloth, which is like chicken wire, only it's square, and he's going to put that in the, the doors when I'm done. He'll show you how to do that. But for now, I'm just going to distress. When I'm doing a big piece, one of my favorite ways to distress is to use the orbital sander. I've got 150 on because I want to give it a heavy distress. If you're worried that 150 will take too much off, you can also use 220 and sometimes I'll start with 220 but in this case I'm gonna I'm gonna live on the edge to try 150 right away. I'm gonna get my mask on and then we're gonna get to distressing. So you can see that it's it's kind of distressing along the edges and where the wood has naturally expanded and contracted over the years it's kind of raised and so I'm just highlighting all of those areas 
and giving it a natural wear. You don't want to do it in one spot too long and make it look like a cheetah. It really should look like some natural wear. And I'm also going to bring out the layers of yellow and red. I want them to come through and give it a really nice natural chippy age. And sometimes I sand one direction and then I'll come across and sand the other direction. And that keeps it from looking like streaks. So the nice thing about uh, DIY paint and Fairy Chalk Mother and even Sweet Pickets, all the brands I use, because they're a very chalky matte finish, when you sand it, it gets like super buttery smooth. If you're using a latex paint, you're not going to get that. It's going to be, it's going to kind of peel up and this just powders off. So yeah, well you get a great chippy finish, but it's also nice to the touch. So I have two pieces of the hardware cloth put in. I'm getting ready to do the third. Normally on a more modern style hutch, what I would do is I would just staple along the edge because they don't have this insert for the glass to go down in. I would have had to completely deconstruct and possibly break these cabinet doors to get the hardware cloth in there to sit flush in here. So what I've done is just notched out the corner on these. It's a quarter inch larger all the way around. So this stuff is pretty flexible. So what I do here is I just take it and fit it into there. I get the sides in first. And I recommend gloves because these are these edges are sharp where I cut them here. And you gotta, you gotta work with it a little. It's not gonna go right in. You gotta kinda angle it and the little barbs are gonna wanna try to catch and sometimes you gotta bend the top up a little so that you can get it in nice and flush. Okay, so I get one side in. Now I'm just gonna flex it a little from the back side here and bring this other side around so that it can fit in as well. It all needs to come up just a little bit. So the easier way is definitely stapling them in. I have a video where I did that on a hutch and I'll show you how to do that if you prefer that. All right, so I've got the two sides in finally. Now I'm just gonna flex this top so you can see me bending that down a little until this slides in. And it's gonna scratch my paint job a little bit. Um, so I can either, if I don't want that, I can distress it more, or I can go back in and paint it with a little brush. But you don't, once you have it like this, you don't wanna spray, cause you'll get white all over your hardware cloth. Okay, so I've got this one corner that's being a little stubborn. I'm just gonna take my screwdriver Pop that up in there. Okay, and now I can feed that up in. Same thing with the bottom. I'm just gonna flex it out until those pop down in there. They're gonna almost wanna spring down in when you flex it. And then I got another corner over here that's gonna be close, but that's okay. You want it to be tight. Bent it a little. It's okay. All right, so now those are in real nice and secure. Unless someone punches that, it's not coming out. We're using Sweet Pickens Top Coat to seal this. I had to water it down just a little bit, probably about two parts of water to eight parts of sealer so that it would spray good. It was kind of coming out kind of thick when I initially started. It's the first time I've tried spraying it, so once I get a good formula down, I'll show you guys that if you're interested. It's time to put the hardware on. This is what Jamie selected. She's been really loving the cup pulls on pretty much everything. And these are gonna go on the drawers. And then I've got these tiny little glass, black glass knobs that I'm gonna be putting on all the cupboard doors.
the gal that I bought this from said that the pre she bought it in California and the previous owner was from the original Mo Little Rascals movie. Really? And I can't remember which character it was, but it was you one of the- You got any papers on that? No, I don't have any papers on it, but this belong- I mean, I don't know why she would lie to me. She had no reason to- I'm not saying she's lying. Just... I mean, I got a good deal on it, so I don't care. <laughs> but it was pretty ugly, and we had to amend it. So over here is where the flower hopper would have been, but it was like not all together, and, yeah. it, and it made it less useful. You couldn't put stuff there. And there was also this big jar over there that I still have the jar, but I didn't have the top. Yeah, I don't know what it was really for. It looked like maybe you uh, put pickles in it or something. I don't know. It was not a, I don't know. It had like a little thing on the bottom. Whoever buys this, I'll just be like, here, if you want this, you can attach it. But the cool thing is that I'm showing that, that um, drawer down below. Which drawer? Oh, I don't know if they can see it from over there, but I'll get close It's metal, pictures. and it's made for flour, right? Yeah, I think that's down below where they can see it. But yeah, it's got the metal in it, and it's... Whoa, oh, I have to fix that before we sell. Look at that. You think you're done with the project? <laughs> and this is a Hoosier, and a lot of people are like, what's that? So back in the day, did you already explain this to them? Um, no. So back in the day, women didn't have kitchen cupboards the way we do now. So this is like the ultimate like kitchen cabinet experience. This pulls out and it would allow for additional baking space or preparation. You've got your rack up there. It had a flour sifter that we've removed and then it has the bin on the bottom for storage. And this is what they used every day when they were cooking in their homes. And it also has a cutting board. This cutting board has been used a lot. Yeah. Oh, it's sure. got a lot of cut marks on it. But we gave it a new life. It had a yellow paint job and a red paint job, and you can still see a little bit. And one of the things that when I'm doing a piece like this, I could take it and strip it down and make it look brand new, but I don't want to get rid of all the character that comes from the years of use. So we clean it up to where it's usable, but we leave some. There's a few drips from the original paint job that we left in there, a few chips. Um, some imperfections that we left because we want it to look legitimately old. We don't want it to look brand new. So, are you finding more imperfections? Yeah, don't look, don't look at it too close. We're gonna keep the camera. <laughs> and actually, we actually even have on this one. There's a little bit of bleed through, but I like it because it makes it look old. So yeah. we're gonna call it authentic aged patina. So we mix the DIY paint with the fairy chalk mother. If you're buying it for a project, you can just buy one or the other. But if you do have a little bit of it, either one, you can mix them. Like there's no, like it doesn't hurt. They're the, both water-based. They're so they both water-based, well. yeah. So they, they, they play well. Too. We sealed it with Sweet Pickens top coat, which we've just started using. And I really like it because you can brush it on. You don't see brush strokes. It's nice and smooth and it's matte. So it looks kind of like a wax but yeah. you get the durability of a top coat. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. If you want any of those products, be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com. We've got them all on there. We're happy to ship nationwide. If you've got questions on this project or on the hardware cloth, comment below. Hardware came from Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Bought it when it was half off. I've had it for like a month. So they're always a good option. I love white and black. If you've seen my kitchen, I, same thing got going on. I feel like it's a good, um, mix and cup holes are always classic. Be sure to comment below with any questions you have on this project. Um, PM me on Facebook if you have any like specific questions you need help with. I'm not always super quick to answer but I try to help everybody out. Um, subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage and be sure to give us a thumbs up.